Welcome to the Moravian Church Worship on the Web for the 13th of September. I'm Sister Joy Rayner, the Provincial Youth and Children's Officer, and it'll be my pleasure to lead you in this service this morning. Worship today will be focused around Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. So before we begin, let us bring ourselves ready for worship with a short prayer. Ah, Lord God, it is you who made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Help us to worship you with all our being. Amen. sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not, not seven times, but, I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, 
one who owned who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him, and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their lord all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, you, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in, and in anger, his lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your... Forgiveness is not an easy topic. We teach children to say sorry, but in real life it's not that easy. Because the bottom line is that we are really good at hurting each other. That is sadly the reality of human relationships. From small slights to great harm, we have all hurt others and been hurt by them. In today's reading, Peter says to Jesus, so if someone hurts me, how many times do I need to forgive them? What, as many as seven times? Well, personally, I think seven's pretty generous because if I'm honest, I sometimes struggle, struggle giving people second chances, let alone seven. And Jesus says to Peter, you've missed the point. It's not seven times. It's like 77 times or even 70 times seven times. It doesn't matter, you're not supposed to count. And so Jesus, as he so often does, tells a story. A story about a man who experiences forgiveness of his debt and yet is unable to offer the same compassion to his colleague in return. The man owes the king 10,000 talents a talent is a unit of measurement for weighing precious metal, usually silver, equivalent to about 15 years of pay for a labourer. So this servant owes about 150,000 days, years of wages. It is an astronomical amount. How on earth does someone run up a debt that big? There is absolutely no way that this man can pay back his debt. Even if all his possessions are sold and him and his family are sold into slavery, the king can only hope to get back about 1%. He may plead for extra time, but realistically, he's not going to be able to pay that money back. So the king's forgiveness is beyond extravagant. The second slave, on the other hand, uh, owes 100 denarii. One denarii was considered day's wages for an ordinary working person, so he owes about 100 days' wages. This is not an earth-shattering amount, and at least there is a hope that given time it could be paid back. But the man's not prepared to wait and has his colleague thrown into jail. And when this is brought to the king's attention, he throws the unforgiving servant into jail to be tortured instead. So far, so good. A nice morality tale on being forgiving, right? Well, until we get to the next line. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. What? Really? 
What does that mean? Is Jesus really suggesting that if we don't forgive someone, God is going to hand us over to devils and pitchforks to torture us for all eternity? This parable, if treated like allegory, makes God into the banked guy. It feeds us a lie that God has some ledger tallying up our good deeds against our sins like a child's sticker chart with smiley faces and grumpy ones and that if we cross that line, if the balance doesn't come out in favour of our smiley faces, then God is just waiting for an excuse to throw us into hell. So I want to tell you now, that is a lie. The story of God's people from the beginning of time is how God has a desired relationship with his people. Time and time again, God intervenes to save his people from their own sinfulness and show them the love he has for them. But people just keep messing up and pulling away. So God comes himself in the form of Jesus to show us what love really looks like and to encourage us to live a life of love. A God who would give himself up and hang on a cross to show God's love for us is not going to look for an excuse to throw us into hell. There is often lots of talk of forgiveness. Can we forgive people who place bombs in concert venues? What about people committing genocide or people who abuse and hurt children? In the, in the story of human sin, bad things, evil things, hurtful, damaging, life annihilating things happen. Some terrible things are done. How can we ask those damaged by the actions of others to forgive? And how can we be, with any sincerity, tell them that a loving God will throw them into hell if they can't forgive the person who hurt them? So what does forgiveness mean? Is it about a burden placed on those who've been wronged? This responsibility on the wronged can seem like further punishment. But in fact, forgiveness is not about absolving someone from wrongdoing or helping them clear their conscience. Forgiveness is about setting your own heart free. Retaliation or holding on to anger about the harm done to us or living in fear of it happening again doesn't actually combat evil, it feeds it. Because it would seem that when we are sinned against, when someone else does harm, that we, held, that we are held captive by that sin. And we know that our anger, fear or resentment doesn't free us at all. It just keeps us chained up. God has a different way of combating evil. It's not punishment and it's not retaliation, fear or anger. It's forgiveness. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, suffering the worst that one human being can do to another. He doesn't even lift a finger to condemn those who put him on the cross, but instead proclaims of all things forgiveness. In doing so, he cuts the world loose from our own sin because Jesus can't stand to see us chained to it. And that is what the cross is all about. God entering deeply into the suffering caused by human evil, evil and saying, this ends here. And we are set free. And then God says, go and do likewise. Forgive as you have been forgiven. Set others free too. Looked at this way, forgiveness is not about saying what you did. Didn't matter. When bad things happen, we need to say that it's not okay. And that is why we need to forgive. Because we can't be bound to that kind of evil. When we forgive someone, it's not an act of niceness. Forgiving is choosing the values of the kingdom over the culture of the world. It's choosing not to be tied to human sin, but stating our allegiance to God's way of combating evil. And in turn, when we are forgiven by someone else, we are set free because they are saying they will no longer be bound to the harm we did them. I was listening to Radio 4 earlier and heard this phrase, the wonder of forgiveness. And perhaps we need to remember this when we are struggling to forgive others, that it is a wondrous thing. I'm not going to tell you that this is easy. easy. Remember what I said at the beginning, forgiveness is not an easy topic, and hand on heart, I struggle with this every day. The good news of Jesus is that we are asked to forgive, not because we are super holy, or to avoid eternal pun punishment, or store up some kind of heavenly, heavenly merit. We are asked to forgive because the God who loves us wants us to be free from the burden of our own guilt.
and the burden of the harm caused to others by to us by others. I want to leave you with the words of Nelson Mandela who said, it's not enough to be free, we must also live in a way that enhances, enhances the freedom of others. We are set free and God says, go and do likewise. It's now time for our prayer time. Sometimes it would be really hard to think about how we pray. So one of the things we did at summer camp this year was to look at different tools which might help us with our prayers. And we're going to use one of them today. So I'm in my kitchen and I'm coming to the kitchen drawer to get a teaspoon. And you might say... How's a teaspoon going to help me with my prayers? But actually, teaspoon, if you, anyone's a cook, knows it's T-S-P. And that helps us to remember we need to say thank you, say we're sorry, and then say please to God in our prayer time. Go. Thank you, God, for our family and friends, food and drink. 
Thank you, God, for our shelter and homes. Thank you for the NHS schools and churches. Thank you for the wildlife and the countryside. Thank you for the kind and loving people. Amen. Dear Lord, I apologise for taking things for granted and purposely doing mean things. I'm also sorry for deliberately hurting people. Lord Jesus, thank you for when we say sorry, you forgive us. Amen. Dear Lord, please help the healthcare workers, teachers and essential workers at this time of continual crisis. Please keep those fighting for their human rights and freedom safe and please aid them in their fight. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for joining us and may God bless you and your family and everything you do this week. Goodbye.